Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The title of tonight's talk is Exposing the New Age Craze. A former New Age leader speaks out as a Christian witness. It's a privilege and an honor to be here with you tonight to be able to share the story of my deliverance from the bondage of Satan's New Age movement through the mighty power and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. As well this evening, I will be exposing the strategies and wiles of the adversary who is amassing many forces and influences through the massive occult revival known as the New Age movement rising up in today's fast-changing times. It is my hope and prayer tonight that through my testimony that the body of Christ may in some way be strengthened and alerted to some important facts and perspectives about the New Age. I also rejoice in having the privilege of bearing witness to the resurrection and the life of Jesus our Messiah. And I pray that even if you don't agree with every single perspective that I discuss, that we would hold each other up in the faith in Jesus Christ that we all do share. Truly, as the Apostle Paul writes, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. As a teenager, Satan tempted me into dabbling in exotic Eastern mysticism and developing psychic powers, which hooked me into the New Age. This path led over the course of 15 years a life involving yoga, psychedelic drugs, holistic health, belief in reincarnation, acquiring familiar spirits, divination, crystal power, and many other New Age phenomena. In fact, through the years, I rose quickly through the ranks of the New Age to write two popular books by a respected mainstream publisher, which sparked a meteoric career ascent to national and international renown on the New Age scene. But in the midst of enjoying all this success, I had an absolutely horrifying encounter with evil forces, evil forces that masquerade as light and offer counterfeit truths through broad New Age paths. While I'll elaborate on this whole story later on in this talk, these demonic forces threatened to totally possess and devour me. And on the brink of seeming annihilation, I came to repent of many multitudes of sins and to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. And true to his promise, the Lord Almighty cut the chains of Satan's bondage and set me free from certain death into life everlasting. Jesus gave his life for me on the cross of Calvary, and I have given my life to him. In this new life in Christ, the Lord has laid a burden on my heart to stand up and witness to his saving grace, as well as to expose the darkness, dangers, and deceptions of the Luciferic New Age. One of the major themes I'd like to point out tonight is the rather alarming growth rate of this movement and how it has spread extensively throughout every level of our society in both obvious and well-disguised ways. The surprising growth spurt is one of the major stories occurring in America in the 1980s. The New Age movement has gone from being a hippie and Eastern guru revival of the 1960s to being sparked in grassroots middle America in the 1970s to being one of the fastest rising phenomenon in our country in the 1980s. Findings of numerous highly respected researchers conclude that the New Age is the fastest growing alternative belief system in our country today. With the advent of what I call the Shirley MacLaine era starting in 1985 or so, the American general public has been exposed to at least a very general picture of the New Age agenda. Images in Doonesbury mocking the harmonic convergence come to mind when he depicted the highly touted harmonic convergence as a moronic convergence, and People magazine called it a maximum bummer. Shirley MacLaine, the self-appointed superstar New Age spokesperson, has introduced many millions of Americans to the New Age through her best-selling books and infamous TV miniseries Out on a Limb. It's interesting to note that national bookstore chains experienced a 95% increase of sales of New Age books over the two weeks after Shirley's miniseries, and that New Age books have become the fastest rising trend in the publishing industry, reaching an estimated $1 billion of sales per year. But yet what you generally see or read about in newspapers, magazines, or see on the news shows is only one slice of the New Age pie. There are many slices or branches of the New Age movement that are very important to be aware of. And the tricky part of all this is that the New Age is not just what you think of when Shirley MacLaine, the Harmonic Convergence, or hippies, witches, and gurus come to mind. The New Age is not just confined to obvious forms, like hippie types wearing bizarre-looking rainbow clothes and crystal pendants, eating sprouts, and having visualized world peace bumper stickers on their rickety Volkswagen buses. In today's times, you're just as likely to be exposed to New Age influences by someone wearing a three-piece suit or a laboratory coat. Such persons might not even use the term New Age as they shared ideas and techniques in various professional settings that are in reality based on an underlying New Age philosophy. In both obvious and 
highly disguised forms, the many different branches of the New Age have made significant inroads into every level of our civilization in often surprising ways. Some of these areas include the corporate business world, healthcare and medicine, education, music, politics, psychology, even science. The New Age has come of age in many ways. In every single area of society I just mentioned, there are hundreds of PhDs and other educated successful professionals from all areas of American society. To give just a few examples of highly respected professionals in diverse fields who are on record as being involved in one type of New Age practice or another. These include Edgar Mitchell, Apollo astronaut, sixth man to walk on the moon, who after having a mystical experience in space has founded a New Age institute called the Institute of Noetic Sciences which explores many aspects of the New Age, especially concentrating on the development of psychic powers of the human mind. Another example, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, the most highly respected world authority in the hospice field, who today advocates the acquiring of familiar spirits and certain other occult practices. Bernie Siegel, highly renowned medical doctor and author of the best-selling book, Love, Medicine, and Miracles, which among other things, advocates the acquiring of familiar spirits to aid in the healing process. Barbara Marks Hubbard, well-known futurist and former candidate for the vice presidency, is a highly visible global figure promoting New Age politics. Carl Jung, who along with Freud was one of the founding fathers of modern-day psychology, who received much of his theories from a familiar spirit named Philemon. And Robert Mueller, former assistant secretary general to the United Nations for over a decade, who has written a recent book advocating a one-world globalism with a New Age-type religious philosophy. And these examples of highly respected figures from numerous disciplines are just a few examples. Recent studies show that the most dominant component of the New Age today is the successful professional career person, male and female, whose average age is between 30 and 45 years old. From amongst the ranks of the yuppie and upper middle class are a predominantly influential voice in the New Age today. This is one major underlying reason for why and how New Age-oriented ideas and practices have made such strong strides in infiltrating American culture. Many things have changed quickly in this movement in the last 10 years, and numerous trends, strategies, and facts are quite important to know about. Overall, from yet another direction, there is a very real and fast-rising threat to the body of Christ that we all need to be aware of and towards which there is a growing need to take a firm stand. Most Christian critics of the New Age are observers who are looking from the outside in. They have studied it, analyzed it, and critiqued its many falsehoods and dangers very well. However, very few of them actually know the inside story, a story that can only be known by having lived within it for a considerable time. To my regret today, I tell you that the New Age was my life, my love, for some 15 years. I have broken bread and shared innermost thoughts with thousands of New Age pilgrims. The New Age used to be my home, and I explored its many alien landscapes with great vigor and curiosity, all the while truly believing that I had really found ultimate truth. Little did I realize at the time that what I considered to be a home filled with light, truth, and peace was an actuality of viper's den, filled with cunningly camouflaged hate, lies, and chains of glittery bondage. Satan, who masquerades as an angel of light, is certainly a masterful counterfeiter and has done a cunning job in his authoring of the New Age. Today, as a converted Christian, I can share the inside story of what the New Age is really all about with unique insights and perspectives drawn from one who knows the real story and then was delivered from its consuming bondage. And what I see today with the eyes of a new man in Christ truly alarms me in many ways. I see the deceptions, the dangers, the marks of Satan's New Age handiwork infiltrating into American society in often surprising and subtle but profound ways. Along these lines, some of the issues that I'll be addressing tonight include questions like, why are so many tens of millions of people finding the New Age so attractive and compelling? How is this movement drawing so many Christians into its temptations and false promises? What are some of the indicators that Christians can use in practically discerning disguised New Age influences? And how does the New Age movement fit into the biblical prophecies concerning the end times and the rise of the Antichrist? These and other important questions I'll be addressing as we proceed. One of the numerous reasons why we should be vigilant about the New Age is that it's snatching away so many people from the general Christian community. Statistics show that more than 70% of New Agers grew up in homes having Judeo-Christian backgrounds. And my own experience in talking with many thousands of New Agers confirms this figure. 
I myself used to be one of these statistics. I was brought up in a good Christian home 